Bucknutters, welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Friday, January 20th, 2017. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Patrick Murphy. Patrick, a uh, big topic of conversation in the college football world every year at this time is whether or not there should be an early signing period um, for college football, like we see in college basketball and other sports. Um, I know Urban Meyer is against this. I've been watching a lot of uh, Mike and Mike this week. I know Mike Greenberg is screaming from the rooftops that there should be an early signing period, talking about the whole Randy Etzel situation at UConn pulling the scholarship from the young man. So uh, where do you fall down? you yay or nay on an early signing period in college football? Yeah, I'm a little torn because maybe it's because we listen to Urban so frequently and this comes up a lot, but, you know, I agree with him that the kids have the right to make this choice and, and go through the whole thing and, you know, he talks about his daughters and having seen them go through the process and stuff. Um, so I I totally get that side of it. But then, you know, you mentioned Mike and Mike and the Randy Edsel thing, and I've heard that as well. And I get why, you know, that's uh, a problem, you know, that side of it. So um, I'm a little bit in the middle, I guess, on this. You know, I think what needs to come down is, is whatever is best for the kids. Um, you know, they – they're the ones that are doing all this. They're the ones that, you know, probably in, in the grand scheme of things kind of get screwed um, by, you know, the whole situation. I mean, they do get free education and all that, get the opportunity to, you know, make a name for themselves, and I get that. But, you know, we, we need the best situation for them, whatever that is, and, and maybe someone a little bit more informed. I guess, you know, I, I would say I like the fact that they have the freedom to, to change their mind, but the fact that, you know, a coach can call up. And, and Randy Etzel is not the only one. You know, Nick Saban's done this. Jim Harbaugh's done this. Um, you know, we haven't heard of Urban Meyer doing this since he's been at Ohio State, but it doesn't mean something hasn't happened necessarily. It's been kept swept under the rug. Um, but, you know, I mean, it happens a lot, I guess, is what I'm saying. And, and it's an unfortunate situation. So, you know, I guess I, I like the freedom for the kids, but I also don't like the way that it can come back and kind of bite them in the butt. Joe Burrow is staying at Ohio State. There was a uh, a tweet um, from somebody that uh, said that he was going to, um, you know, likely transfer from Ohio State. I don't think the tweet said it was anything was official, but that Joe Burrow was likely going to transfer, and Joe Burrow shot that down. As you uh, posted a story on Bucknuts that is still a very lively thread on our front row message board. I think it's like six pages now. Uh, people have very strong feelings one way or the other. Um, yeah. Just so your initial thoughts on uh, – Joe, when you heard Joe Burrow say on Twitter, LOL, guys, I'm not transferring, um, just your initial thoughts when you heard that, that Joe Burrow was staying. Yeah, I wasn't surprised at all. We talked to him at some point during the season, and you know, I was right there, asked him a couple questions, and, you know, this is a very confident kid. Um, you know, maybe he wasn't the highly recruited prospect that, that some of Ohio State guys are and wasn't, you know, as, as, as out there as some of these guys, but... You know, he believes he has a chance to be the starting quarterback at Ohio State someday. He's an Ohio guy from Athens, and he, and he wants to do that. And there's no reason to think otherwise. You know, he's the backup quarterback right now. Um, when JT's gone, you know, there'll be an open competition. But right now, he's number two. So why would he leave? I mean, I, you know, the arguments are made that he's seen Dwayne Haskins in practice. And, you know, these guys aren't scared of competition. I mean, you see some guys walk away, I guess, at other programs sometimes when when there's – you know, log jam in a position because they think they can play quicker somewhere else. Joe Burrow, son of a coach, you know, he's a guy who's going to stay and fight for this position. And I think he's got as good of a shot as, as any of these guys to win it, um, you know, from, from what we've seen of him this year. You know, limited time against the second string defense for the most part, but, you know, just looks calm and confident out there. And like I said earlier, I think he thinks he's got as good of a chance as anybody to win this job. And I don't think there's any reason at least from what we've seen and heard, to think otherwise. Yeah, the obvious follow-up question, Patrick. Um, you know, who's your uh, you pick right now? I know it, it won't be decided for a while. Who is the heir apparent to JT Barrett? Is it Joe Burrow? Is it Dwayne Haskins? Might it even be Tate Martell? Like, if you had to pick right now, who do you think it'll be? Yeah, the way that Urban has 
gushed over Dwayne Haskins, leads me to believe, you know, and, and we haven't seen Dwayne on it, obviously, besides his high school tape, but the way that he's talked about him, you know, assuming he continues to progress and, you know, Joe continues on his progression and, and you know, we'll see how Tate does, but, you know, he seems to be that next guy, um, as I know you pointed out in, in a couple things you've written, that, you know, while he didn't run a lot in high school, that was more because of the pro-style offense that he was in. I think he has the athleticism to do it. Um, you know, he obviously did well simulating Dwayne, or, uh, Deshaun Watson in, in the bull prep. Um, maybe not well enough based on how, how they defended him, but, uh, I think that he's, I think that he, he seems to be that next guy. Now, with that said, you know, time and place is going to be big here. You know, who's ready to step up when JT does leave, you know, or, you know, whatever his, his thing ends, whether it's, you know, this spring and, and if they do an open quarterback competition, whatever that situation is, who's ready to seize the moment? Because that's a big part of it too, you know. Sure, uh, Dwayne's looked good and, and has the skills and whatnot and, you know, maybe he is creeping up on Joe there, but if he's not, you know, ready at that moment and Joe looks good, you know, I mean, we saw it when, uh, two years ago with, uh, with Cardale, you know, he was, according to Urban, the guy who looked better in, in fall camp. And so he was the guy who won that, won that quarterback job. And I think that, you know, it, that was a lot about time and place and just being confident coming off that national championship run. So if I had to go with a gut guess, I would say it's probably, uh, Dwayne's job, but uh, but we'll see what happens. I want to talk about Chase Young a little bit. This looks like one of those sure. kids that has to play as a true freshman, and I mean he's now elevated to the number four, you know, overall prospect in the land, and he just looked like a beast at the uh, Army All American game, and uh, you know, talking to you know people who were there during the week, he looked good in practice all week too. So um, just seems like a plug and play type guy. You you put him in there, and defensive ends one of those positions where. You know, you don't have to have, you know, uh, you know, really a deep knowledge of the defense to be able to play. It's like, you know, be a heat-seeking missile, you know, find the ball, go get the quarterback. Um, here's the thing, though. I, I cannot remember, Patrick, a, an Ohio State team that was this deep at defensive end without Chase Young. Let's take him out of the equation for a second. They returned both starters and Tyquan Lewis, the Big Ten Defensive Lineman of the Year, and Sam Hubbard. They return Nick Bosa, who I think is going to, like, explode next year as a sophomore, um, and Jalen Holmes, uh, who had a tremendous year. And I know a lot of those guys can move inside. I get that, and that will happen. Um, and, you know, they have Jonathan Cooper, who was a big-time recruit, played as a little bit as a true freshman last year. He's coming back as a sophomore. So my question to you, sir, where does Chase Young fit in as a true freshman? How are they going to get this kid playing time? Yeah, we were talking about – potential log jam and quarterback defensive end makes that look like a no problem, right? Um, <laughs> I think that they I think it's a good thing that you know, they've already established this rotation. You know, we heard about it when Larry Johnson made the transition over from from Penn State and the last couple of years we really started to see it last year specifically with that depth that you mentioned. Um, Chase I think is is just another another weapon in that, you know. Um, the best part, I think, about all of this, and, and I don't know Chase, but I assume he'll fit right in with these guys, is that none of these guys care about the number of snaps they're playing, the number of sacks they're getting. They're all very unselfish, you know, real good kids. And so, you know, if, if Sam Hubbard's snaps are going down because Nick Bosa and Chase Young are getting on the field a little bit more, you know, Sam Hubbard wants to win. And, you know, he wants to be a part of a, a, this deep defensive line rotation Sam could have left if he wanted. He knows what's coming in. He knows the line. Same with Taekwon, you know, all these guys. Um, so I think he'll be out there. I think that, um, you know, you see him in probably a similar situation that we've seen both both Bosa brothers, uh, maybe a, a little bit here and there early on, especially, um, you know, you'd, you'd like to think that some of the games early in the season, though I guess the way the schedule shapes up next year, we're starting off pretty quickly there with Indiana and Oklahoma in the first few games. But, uh, you know, in some of those non-conference games that, that aren't against the Sooners, I think, you know, you, you try and get him in there. You try and, and see that how he handles playing in front of, you know, 100,000 people and things like that. But there's no reason to think, you know, watching that Army All-American game, that was the first time I'd really seen him play in, in a game action and not just watching highlights. And, you know, the, the kid's a beast. I mean, you know, granted, those are high school seniors, but those are the best high school seniors. And, and, you know, he was making them look silly at times. So there's no reason to think that he's not 
you know, already in Larry Johnson's rotation for, for the defensive line at that end position next year. And like you mentioned, some of these guys can get to the inside where, you know, Ohio State, deeper than they probably have been in the last few years, but not nearly as deep as they'd like to be. Yeah, Chase Young looks so good. You know, it's, it's, I don't want to put too much, you know, hype on the incoming freshman. I hate doing that, but like he, he looks so good. And this isn't like just looking at recruiting rankings, like just watching the game. It's like, wow, that kid just pops off the TV and, and, you know, and he's got all the measurables. He's not, you know, he's not like, well, he's a little undersized, but he looks really good out there. It's like, no, he's, he's 6'5", right. 250. You know, he's, he's gonna, he's, he looks like he's like NFL ready right now and the Buckeyes are gonna have him for three years. It is, it is scary, the depth. And talent they have at defensive end. Um, Ohio State's basketball team will look to move to uh, a three-game winning streak on Sunday. They will host Northwestern. The Buckeyes right now 12 and seven overall. They're two and four in Big Ten play. Um, the conversation has quickly turned from is Dad Mata done after this year to hey, is there any chance this team could sneak in the NCAA tournament? Um, I never thought we'd be talking about that, um, you know, a week ago or two weeks ago. But um, you know, if, if this team can finish. I don't know. Put a put a record on it for me. If they're two and four in the Big Ten right now, do they have to go you know, nine and nine in the Big Ten? Do they have to go ten and eight in the Big Ten? What's your magic number for Ohio State to make the NCAA tournament? Well, you know, not to give you a little bit of coach speak, but with this team, I really think they need to go one and zero each game. I mean, you know, I know that sounds cliche and whatnot, but I really think that this team can't look too far ahead. Now, from our perspective, we can look ahead, um, and I think that. There's a chance here. I think these next few games are going to be telling. Um, you know, they've got Northwestern, as you mentioned, Sunday. They've got another home game following that up, Minnesota Wednesday. Uh, they go to Iowa, which will be tough. Um, Iowa just made a big comeback last night against Maryland at home. Um, I think they ended up losing that game, but they were down by like 20 points at one point. And then they, they did play lose. Maryland. They, they, they did lose. Iowa did lose that game after coming back, and stupid Fran McCaffrey freaked out again. When is this guy going to get fired? I'm sorry. Fran, Fran McCaffrey is an idiot. He freaked out again last night on the officials. I'm sorry. Go ahead. They don't fire coaches in Iowa. Don't you know that by now? <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. Yeah. But to answer your question, you know, I mean, we saw last year 11 wins in the Big Ten wasn't enough. Now, you know, Ohio State has a better non-conference, only one kind of what-are-you-doing loss, which could still come back to bite them when they when they lost at home to uh, Florida Atlantic. But you know, I think the way they played Virginia will be looked at positively. Um, the UCLA game will be looked at somewhat positively. I mean, it was a 13-point game by the end. Um They've got a win over UConn, which at the time looked to be an, like an okay win. UConn hasn't looked nearly as good as they have in the past, so so that's not going to help them. So they're going to need, you know, to get back to probably those 11 big, 10, 11 big 10 wins, but they're going to need some upset, you know, whether they can can win on the road somewhere, you know, at Michigan State maybe, um, beat Wisconsin at home, second or third to last game of the season. If Indiana gets a turnaround, maybe that last game of the season can kind of be a a schedule booster, but I really think this stretch, you know, if it started, obviously the Michigan State game was was a big one to get that first win, but, you know, going to Nebraska, who's a pretty good team, but, you know, they're nothing special, but getting that road win, you know, those two were big. Now you've got in the next three of your four at home, can you go on a bit of a run here? And maybe not go 4-0 in these next four games, but, you know, 3-1 and would be big. Um, And that's more so for anything in my mind is it's just a confidence booster. Um, they, they, you know, need to continue to build on these things that are working. Fad keeps talking about we need to establish certain things that are are key things for us that we know we can ha- hang our hat on. And they're starting to do that with the toughness and, and this fight that you saw in the Michigan State game. You saw in the second half against Nebraska. Um, and so if they can can kind of get some things that are that are really working for them, you know, they can go on a bit of a run here. Um, with that said, we've seen this team, you know, last year and, and at times this year just lose their minds, so to speak, mentally and, and not be able to, you know, do it. They they play to the level of the opponent a lot of times. So it'll be interesting. These last few games have been fun, um, both both close games, but uh, you know, they've, they've got to kind of make a name for themselves here over these next few. It's going to be 60 degrees in the capital city of Ohio tomorrow. What are your plans? Yeah. Are you going to be doing some jet jet skiing, or what? What are you going to be doing tomorrow? Yeah, on the on the nice Olentangy, I'll be out there jet skiing if anyone wants to come watch. 
<laughs> I'll take more like Allen Creek or something. But yeah, uh, if you want to jet ski down the whole uh yeah, have fun with that. But, uh, <laughs> great stuff as always out of Patrick Murphy. Thank you, Patrick, and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning in to the show. I appreciate it. I hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Let's hear some Buckeye swag, best fan band in the land. Bye. Bye. Bye.